So we're back with part two of taking a load off your knees. And in this video, we're going to explore how um, learning about or increasing your awareness about your ankle and your foot, how that can actually take a load off your knee. So the last video we explored how moving up at the hip joint could take a load off your knee uh, because your knee is made up of your femur, that's a part of your hip joint, and your tibia or your shin, that's a part of your ankle joint and intimately related to your foot. So today we're considering how this bottom half of your knee, your tibia or your shin, um can help take a load off of your knees in general so let's dive in all you'll need for this practice is um somewhere to sit <laughs> so we'll start though uh just as we did in part one with a quick check-in with your knees so come on up into standing and just check in with how your knees feel how much load is heading through your knees how much work do they need to be doing um what sensations are available for you to feel around your knees front back insides outsides and then we'll add in our little squats so not going down really deep just a few squats to check in with how are my knees how are they feeling today is there any clicking groaning creaking happening in the knees nice and let's then start to give our feet and ankles some attention shall we so come on down onto your seat and you can cross one leg over the other so that you can reach your foot so our feet are these really awesome parts of us that need to be able to uh, be pliable enough, moldable enough to conform to the surfaces that we step on. And then they also need to be able to transform into a rigid lever when we are propelling ourselves forward or taking a step. So let's play with um, exploring all of the movement, the pliability that is actually available in your foot today. So you can uh, just bring your hands onto your foot. Thumbs will come onto the sole of your foot. Fingers will wrap around the top. Let's stay this way. And then just with using your thumbs, just a gentle massage into the tissues along the sole of your foot. Just feeling in, tuning in. It's like we're flooding your brain with all sorts of sensory information from the sole of your foot and the pressure that your fingers are applying. Nice. And then you can bring your one hand to cup your heel. And then the other hand can reach down across the forefoot or the part of your foot closer to your toes so that your thumb again is on the bottom of the foot and your fingers wrap around to the top. And you're just going to turn each hand in opposite directions so that you're like you're wringing out your foot. So as you press your heel down, you're turning the sole of your foot up closer to your toes up towards the ceiling and then the opposite so just getting some gentle easy movement through the foot letting your foot be like as floppy as possible 
your hands do the work and you get to just feel into the sensations available in your foot. Nice. All right, let's switch sides and we'll do the same thing on the other foot. So crossing your ankle over your, the opposite knee, bringing your hands to your foot so that the thumbs are on the sole of your foot, fingertips wrap around the top, and we're into our foot massage. So just sliding and gliding the thumbs. You choose the pressure, right? So choosing a pressure that provides a level of sensation that feels appropriate, impactful, but not uncomfortable. Yeah. So we're sending with all of this lovely pressure and squeezing, maybe the warmth or the cold of your hands on your feet. All of that information gets sent back up to your brain and your brain is kind of like, oh yeah, my feet can like, there's all of these little parts and they're moldable and pliable and they can move. They don't need to be so tight and rigid yeah all right and then let's come into our uh ringing out of this foot so one hand on the heel other hand up near the near the toes or the base of your toes and then ringing out so twisting opposite directions really getting into so here not only are we moving the skin like we were in the massage and the tissues um, under the skin, but we're actually moving the bones of your foot. Yeah, really nice. Okay. So we've spent a little bit of time um, reminding our systems that our feet are, are moldable, are pliable. So now you can just set both feet back down on the ground and maybe just take a look down at your feet and come up onto your toes. So coming up onto your toes and then putting your heels down and lifting your toes. Just a little rocking, heels, toes, toes, heels. Nice. All right. So we're going to move from our feet up into the ankles and more into the shin bone itself. So you can cross a leg over again. And I'd like you to try to keep your foot as relaxed, as easy. I like to call them floppy feet as possible. So your foot's going to stay nice and easy. If you notice any of the tendons on the top of your ankle or on the tops of your foot popping to life, then you can just ask them to take a, a sigh, <laughs> sigh it out. Let your foot stay nice and easy. And we're going to come in and just give a little massage to the tissues around our shins. So we'll start with your hands up near your knees. And I'd like you to find the ridge of your tibia, of your shin bone. You can feel a really solid ridge. And then let your fingers slide down so that they kind of slide off the ridge and they'll sink into some more muscular, like squishier tissues, squishier than the bone at least. And once you've found those tissues, sliding your fingers up and down across those tissues and then moving your hands down till you get closer to the ankle and then back up getting closer to your knee Good. 
and letting these tissues, um, letting the sensations that are created from this pressure from your fingertips, just notice and feel what you feel. Are there any kind of tender spots? Are there places along this side of your shin that are happier to receive this massage? And are there places that are a little resistant, maybe kind of pushing your fingers out of there? Just checking in, really just checking in with our, with our shins. Nice. And then we'll also come around to the back of our shin where we've got our big calf muscles sitting back here. So I'd like you to bring your hands and kind of like, so you can squeeze your calf muscle. So I like to have my thumbs closer to the floor, fingers wrapped around the top and squeezing the calf muscle. And you may notice that as I squeeze lower down, my foot is just passively moving. That's great. So I know that my foot is like nice and relaxed and it's moving because I'm squeezing the tendon, my Achilles tendon, which causes uh, us to point our toes. So we're like kind of, passively contracting our Achilles or our calf muscles using our hands. So let your foot stay nice and floppy again. Really nice. Again, just feeling the sensations, informing or increasing your awareness of your shin, your lower leg, because it plays a big role in how your knee feels. Great, all right, let's do those same two, um, paying attention to our shin bone on the other side. So we'll start by finding the ridge of your tibia, and then let your fingers slide down into the tissues that run along the side, this ridge of your tibia on the front of your shin. And then putting a little bit of pressure and sliding the fingers up and down, kind of perpendicular to these muscles would run in an up and down orientation here. So we're gonna kind of be sliding our fingers across the muscles. Foot is nice and easy, nice and quiet. No tendons popping. <laughs> and then let's come around to, we'll come around to the back of our shin, wrapping our hands around our um, gastrox around our calf muscles here and giving them a little squeeze and then moving down towards the foot. It can be fun to um, kind of use your foot as a bit of a marionette as you like pull on the strings of your Achilles, your foot responds a little bit. Nice. All right, so having paid attention to, kind of nurtured, noticed, acknowledged our lower leg, our tibia, through its connection at the ankle and the foot, let's come back up into standing and check in with how your knees are feeling now. Checking in with noticing the results that you get from this practice of increasing your awareness of your ankles and your feet. So let's add in our little squats and notice 
Are your knees still clicking? Are there the same sounds, the same sensations coming from your knees? Or has something changed? Has the work that you just did around your ankle and your feet, has it had an impact, created a result at your knees? Hope you had fun exploring how you can take a load off your knees at your feet and your ankles. If you'd like more, I would love to see you at our workshop that's called Taking a Load Off Your Knees. It's on May 10th at 10 o'clock Eastern time. You can uh, click the link in this email if for more information. Thanks for playing along. <laughs>